He could have said, come be my disciple. He says, come follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. What you just did with fish. If you follow me, I'll show you how to do that with men. Because when you say something that matters, you should say it in a way that makes it memorable. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Grow Leader Podcast, where we grow leaders that grow churches by helping them reach their full potential. So glad to have you with us today. My name is Matt. If you're brand new to us, we're glad to have you here sitting right beside the chancellor of Highlands College. You have your chancellor jacket on today. Yeah, because today is chapel. And uh, anyway, I kind of like dressing like this anyway. good. I've heard some pastors call my my sport coats the Birmingham Blazer. (laughs) Which, which fits for us because our local college, their mascot is the Blazers. That's right. And so it's, a, it's great. That is your Birmingham Blazer. You yeah, great. I, I like the Birmingham Blazer. We had an amazing, amazing uh, chapel service today. In fact, it wasn't just the chapel service. Uh, one of the distinctives of Highlands College is, is that we have an in-residence program so that um, our students aren't just learning from our very, very excellent faculty and staff. But I don't. I personally believe that students need more than theoreticians right. and just a bunch of smart people. They need practitioners, and not even just practitioners, but the industry leaders. And so we get, uh, we bring in people like Craig Rochelle and CC Winans and Chris Tomlin and Bobby Grunewald, who uh, created the Uversion app, right. and many, many, many others. Uh, Dr. Henry Cloud, others. So to to um, bring in an expertise and really rub shoulders with our students so they not only speak in the chapel services, but they also teach in our classes and spend time with students. And today I have a very, very dear friend of mine, someone that I have just the utmost respect for, yeah. and that is, I call him the real triple, triple D. You know, it's not diners, drive-ins, and dives. It's <laughs> Dr. Darius Daniels. Welcome, my friend. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Triple D. I'm going to take it. Yeah, Triple I'm going to take it. This has been it's been an amazing day. Yeah, tell the tell I mean amazing. they always this hear is, from me no, what seriously. I think about it, but of course seriously. I'm attached to it, but just 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 kind of download the experience uh, to those that are listening no, like, right now. Literally, I think it was 2021 when I came. And this was Highlands College was a vision. And I knew it was going to be great. Right. But to come and to see it today and not just see the facilities, but to experience the environment, the enthusiasm of the students, the community that's being built. Um, It's literally, I feel like the Queen of Sheba who visited Solomon's (laughs) Temple in 1 Kings 10 is like, my breath was taken away. Like I knew it was going to be great. I just didn't know it was going to be this great. And like, this is something, I'm literally walking around. I was like, so how much money am I going to give to this? I got to give to this. You can't, when you see something like this, you see God's hand is on this and you just want to get behind it and invest Mm. in it and uh, have a small part to play in what God's doing here. It's it's amazing. We're very proud uh, to have you as a professor in residence, um, an influencer in residence, we're calling it, with your day here. And you're... You're a very well-educated person yourself, and of course, you know the philosophy of how we train students here, that we're not mm-hmm. only giving them great academic instruction and this bachelor's degree, but also just pouring into them from this mentoring standpoint. Let people get to know you a little bit. So let's just say there are some pastors, I can't imagine uh, someone listening who didn't know who you were, but kind of give us the the quick resume of not only your, your church life, your, your how, how you were raised, but also the, your education. Yep, so... Long story short, grew up in a small town. Right now, it's 500 people. It's like 800 people when I grew up there. <laughs> Kill Michael, Mississippi. Literally one doctor. Seriously, like wow. the town doctor. Wow. If he wasn't at the clinic, you just go to his house. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I, I grew up there. Went to a small liberal arts school in Jackson, Mississippi. Played basketball there called Millsaps College. Yep. Had all intentions of being a lawyer. Majors political science. Going to go into law. About sophomore year, God started tugging on my heart about ministry. My father was a pastor. He's bivocational, well during the day, pastor in the evening. Um, it's just a direction I didn't want to go. He was a great example. I didn't have interest in it. And long story short, by the time my senior year came around, I surrendered law school as an mm. Isaac and made a decision I was going to spend the rest of my life serving God and serving his church. And uh, my dad told me something. He said, part of your call to ministry is a call to preparation. And that is what made me make the decision to say, hey, okay, my next step is going to be seminary so went to princeton for seminary got inspired with this professor what was that experience like going to an ivy league 
you know, for seminary. <laughs> you know, it was it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be because I think one of the things people need to know about Princeton, it, it is a seminary versus the divinity school. And at one time, one of the best- 100%. In the yeah. nation. I mean, So it is not as, it is, I wouldn't put it in the same category as some other institutions that are divinity schools where you may have people there who are studying religion for different faiths. Right. Being a Christian, so creed is a requirement for admission there. Mm -hmm. So it was, I had some really great professors, and it was one professor that was actually responsible for my inspiration to be a church planner. Really? Yep, his name was Dr. Daryl Guder, and I was sitting in his class, and he inspired me to be a church planner. And I took, uh, as a matter of fact, when I, here, here's how things work full circle. A few years ago, I was an adjunct professor there. And it was because of him that I became an adjunct professor. I worked in his department, wow. hopefully trying to inspire students to do the same thing that he did for me. On, and long story short, I got inspired to plant a church. We planted it a year after I graduated from seminary there. And didn't you plant it right there in the Princeton area? Sure Perfect. did. Yeah. Yep. I felt wow. like a, because I came from Mississippi and I'm looking around and I was like, I feel called, I feel like this is the Northeast yeah. is a mission field. Mm-hmm. And I feel called to be a missionary here. So we're going to plant it right here and that's what we did and we were there with a location in central jersey then south jersey for about 15 years or so and in 2022 we um planted in atlanta georgia and that kind of became headquarters i'm obviously skipping over a number of details and so now we've got our locations we'll have two really soon in atlanta and two in new jersey and we're just trying to steward it well. That's, That's it. awesome. That's awesome. But you also um, went to Fuller for your doctorate. Talk about that just for a second. Yeah, I think I was in the, I don't know, I may have been like three years into the church plant and I realized that, um, long story short, I, I want to frame this the right way, but I realized the vision that God had put in my heart for our church could not be manifest. I couldn't preach my way into that vision. There was no Explain manif- that. I, you lost me there. Yeah, so meaning that Disciple making through teaching, preaching the gospel across the pulpit was not moving the needle in terms of the vision God gave me for the church. It was developing people, but it wasn't developing vision. I saw I needed to learn the leadership skill. Okay, wow. That I couldn't I couldn't preach our way there. Um I, I had to I had to learn to lead well. And I saw that was kind of the ceiling that was keeping us from scaling the vision God had given me. So I want to come back to that because um because I think you're an exceptional leader now, but the fact that you say you know, I, I, the, the preaching was natural. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean, the preaching, mm-hmm. like, I, I can do that. Uh, the leading's another thing. Let's come back to that because we're the Grow Leader Podcast and we help <laughs> churches reach their full potential, right? So, we believe in leaders growing. Yeah, we, wanna, yeah, we think when leaders grow and, and when leaders get better and churches get better, then the Great Commission happens. So I want to come back to that. But you are an exceptional communicator, and I don't throw that out just to, just to flatter you. I genuinely believe you're one of the best at just taking thought uh, I just the, the way you develop it and the and the way you uh, communicate it, it's just masterful, my friend. What you did today in chapel. In fact, if you guys want to see uh, what Darius did today in chapel, we have all this on our YouTube channel for the college. It was just so good. I want to. I want. I want you to help the pastors that are listening. Is there okay. any anything? Is I mean, is this is this just a gift and I can't teach it to you, or what can you teach about? Message prep and message delivery. Yep. So in terms of the delivery, uh, I can start there. Okay. I think, now I learned this from Jesus, right? I, so but, but, <laughs> Take notes. The, so when you, somebody says, I learned this I from learned Jesus, it from Jesus. stop right there. Not like notes. personally, <laughs> but <Yeah>. like <laughs> Jesus, didn't, <laughs> Jesus didn't sit down and tell me this. Right. But I'm watching how he communicated. So my passion, let me say this, my passion for communication happened in, I was 19 years old. It was right around the time I was getting called to ministry. I went through just a really rough teeth really rough season in um, college. And my friend invited me to this Bible study. PC, it might've been 12 people at the Bible study. Okay. And most of us were college students, so we broke. But this, but this man, the way he taught, and I'm not even talking about like passion. His name is Keith Quinn. He ta- his preparation, the, 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 the persuasiveness, it like literally, he rocked my world with words. And I just knew, I went in that Bible study feeling bad each week. And each week it was like wow. he was teaching me out of that sunken place. Mm. And so I think that's part of what God used for my calling. And I said, what Keith Quinn did for me, I want to do for other people. I want to rock their world with words. And so I became super intentional about it. And here's what I saw, that the messaging 
is just as important as the message. Okay, the break message that down. Yeah, deal is with the that. content. The messaging is the delivery system. Is the way you deliver it. Okay, and it is um, something I saw with Jesus. Let's take something just as just as simple as him inviting Peter to be an apprentice and a disciple of his. He could have said, come be my disciple. He says, come follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. What you just did with fish. If you follow me, I'll show you how to do that with men. Because when you say something that matters, you should say it in a way that makes it memorable. So I started working on what I call sticky statements. Okay. How can I frame thoughts in a way, like with phraseology, if it's something that matters, how can I say it in a way that makes it memorable? And that's something I probably started working on. And is that just sitting there just thinking about it, or have you developed some techniques and some- I've developed some frameworks. Know, some hacks, you know, basically. Yeah, I've guys. developed some frameworks. So like one example would be, um, so like, I feel like if you come up with one framework, you can come up with some others, right? So one framework is, I call it the walk in, walk out framework. When blank walks in, blank walks out. So I can I can do that. So if I can say, if I can say, hey, when prayer walks in, worry walks out. So you can fill in those blanks okay. with those words. So there's some frameworks that I've developed. And then just over time, I think some of it becomes easier and a little more natural. So I probably think that's one of the most important things to me. Obviously, the message is important, but I work really hard on the messaging. Go ahead, Matt. How did you, because I've seen you in environment, first of all, one of the things I love about you is you're, you're the exact same at this table as you are in an arena with 16,000 students. The, okay. The, the communication <laughs> tone, rhythm, but you, you definitely have found your own voice in communication. And I think that a lot of times, you know, imitation is the first step to creativity, but for both of you, Pastor Chris, I'd love to know for you too, for the communicators, what, what are some things that you went through to kind of develop your own voice? Because you, you, you don't get loud. In fact, you have such a conversational volume when you speak, everybody leans in like, okay, what's he going to say next? Where did you learn that? How does, how do communicators continue to find their own voice when they do communicate? Well, I think one of the things that you just said, I don't, I don't think I started out with my own voice, if that makes sense, you yeah, know. Probably none of us. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. But I do think there's something super unique about the voices you're attracted to. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even though I didn't start out with my own voice, I wasn't attracted to everyone else's voice. I didn't try to emulate everyone else's voice. And what I realized is that the voices that I was kind of organically attracted to were some of the voices that God wanted to use to influence and to shape my right. voice, which is probably a compilation of different influences and kind of my own personality. So I just think it's it's not something I could say that when I look back, I tried to find my own voice. Right. I feel like I just woke up one day and I'd found it, if that if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And they definitely, the people you listen to definitely, and you obviously listen to a lot of sermons, not just mm -hmm. not just preparing them yourselves, right? I mean, yes. that's what I do. I, I probably I probably listen to 15 to 20 sermons a week. Yeah. How many, how many do you listen to? I mean, if, not that your... many. I would probably say at this point, I'm probably listening to one to two. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's a great, especially for those who are trying to develop speaking, is just like, uh, uh, you know, have a lot in the download side of this and, and, and you'll be attracted to certain styles. Mm -hmm. And I have a few that I could never do it, but I still like listening to them yeah. too. In fact, when I'm listening to them, I'm thinking, I could never do that. So I'm just enjoying um, enjoying that. But, but in all of that, it still comes down to what your, you know, your daily disciplines. You said I, I spent a lot of time I have this this process. Talk about when it is. I mean, probably one of the biggest questions I get from pastors, especially when we're in the round table setting, and you've been in some of my sure. my round tables, is is they want it broken down to what time mm -hmm. is it every day? <laughs> it, it, what did you do before that? What did you do after that? Can you can you can you talk about your disciplines a little bit? Because I think personally, knowing you the way I know you. I think it's one of your greatest gifts is that you're a very principled and very disciplined person. So talk about your 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 daily disciplines and where sermon prep fits into your day. Yeah, yeah. So long story short, I think at chapel today I told the story about the an incident that I had in 2014, that panic attack, right? So after that, I just went through some time with therapist and coach. And what I ended up creating was something called an ideal week based off of the creation narrative. God did certain things on certain days. 
And then we were in a round table one time mm-hmm. around and God had orchestrated this. He's so sovereign. And you were talking about, I think somebody asked you a question, PC, about like your week and you were like, you'd be really bored. You, like you, you would be right. very unimpressed or something like that if I told you my week. He's like, because I do the same thing pretty much for the most part all the time. And so that's why, that's when I went to the book of Genesis. I said, hey, God did certain things on certain days. This is how I'm about to align my life. And literally, that's what I've got. Like, I got a whole framework for it. Can you share it? Yeah. Motionless Monday. So Monday is my um, Sabbath. Tactical and touch Tuesday. So Tuesday is I'm using the part of my brain um, for that's strategic for meetings. So I'm meeting with my senior leadership team. I'm meeting with my directional leadership team. Part of that is leadership development. That's what I call touch. And then I'm doing a few one-on-ones. I'm touching my direct reports. And it's a framework for that meeting. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. How are your people doing? How are your projects going? What challenges do you currently face? What challenges do you foresee? So those are the five questions I'm asking my direct reports on Tuesdays. And then it's writing Wednesday. So Wednesday is dedicated to writing the content for sermons and and things. How many many are you working on at one time? Sermons? Yeah. I'm writing one on Wednesday, but like, Still God studying. knows how many swirling yeah, around my yeah, head. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm writing one for, let's like, say, this coming Sunday, I might get a thought for the next Sunday. Exactly. And I start writing that so that I'm not starting from scratch the next Sunday. I think week. that's one of the things pastors miss is, 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 is study doesn't just have to be for the next thing you're doing. You, when you read the Bible and you get a thought, the main thing is, is to get it somewhere where you can find it whenever that week rolls around. Yes. Because you'll, you'll be in those places where you're studying, you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, I, like three weeks ago, I was inspired, I saw that verse. I was doing that this morning. I, was, I read a verse this morning out of, out of Philemon. I mean, think, <laughs> I, mean I know, because it was in, it was in you know, the one-year Bible, and I'm reading Philemon, and as a verse, how, how do you read the one-year Bible every year for 30 years and, and still see something? That's the beauty yeah. of God's Word. Mm-hmm. So but rich. there was a one little sentence in there about, it said something like the, the, the importance of sharing your faith to be able to experience the fullness of the goodness of God. Mm. Like share, I never attached sharing my faith with knowing all wow. that God has. Yes. Man, that's why I wrote that down. So I mean, next time... <laughs> I'm going to talk about sharing our faith, which is, I don't even know when that is, yeah. but I filed it, put it in a place, you know, on evangelism or sharing our faith. Yeah. So next time when I'm studying it, it's sitting there wake, so waiting good. for me. Yeah. And you've even described it as a metaphor. It's a cupboard. Can I keep the cupboard stopped right. all, all the time where when I need something, I know where it is. The, I think both of you probably have great filing systems, like personally that you're using. Yes. Yeah, uh, yep. studying, studying is like yeah, filling your pantry full of food that you're going to cook one day. I like that. Yeah. So, and the, <laughs> and the floor of the pantry is the less you have to shop. Yes. Whenever you are actually preparing a message, but but go I on. I, I I could talk about this all all day. I no, love. I just, I just took that. I just took that. I'm using that. I love it's that. It's so good. Yeah. I, that that was like a mindset shift for me. Just fill the pantry. Fill you, the pantry. Yeah. You don't know but when you need it. The secret to the pantry is you got to be able to know where to find it whenever you do want to talk about sharing your faith. I'm still Amazon Prime. I'm like, I need this in two days. <laughs> like, well, when's it, when's it showing up? Show <laughs> exactly. All right. So so you're yeah. you're doing most of your sermon prep and on you're Wednesday. studying on Wednesday. And mm-hmm. is that an all day? What, is, what does that look like? It actually doesn't take me all day because here's, here's the thing that I do. When I take some time off in the summer, so let's say if, if I took some time off in the summer 2025, which I do, my, my summer sabbatical, Close to the end of the summer, I'm working on my preaching calendar for 26. Yeah. And so I have never map, like mapped out an entire year in the summer. Right. I don't do that. But whatever comes to me during that time, I'm mapping out. That's great. So in my study, it's reverse engineering. I am studying knowing the subjects that I'm going to be teaching about. So if I know I'm going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit, exactly, I'm doing what I call strategic study. I'm not just doing random reading. What is it? I am studying st- strategically, knowing, hey, let me fill my pantry exactly with insight and revelation on the Holy Spirit, so that when I sit down on Wednesdays, when it's time to do the series, and I sit down on Wednesdays to write, I have a pantry I can pull from. I'm not. That's exactly. I'm really it. organizing content and not necessarily creating content. So it takes me. You know, probably three, four hours. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. But you stack the dominoes, as you would call it, 
you already know where you're going. Yeah, you, even if you don't know what series it's going to be called, thematically, I know yeah. in February, we're going to do something around relationships. So every time I study and something That's comes great. relationships, then I'm just going to go throw it in the pantry, mm -hmm. you know, section of the pantry where I can find that. So when February rolls around, you know, the way I say it is, is I don't, I don't really study outside of what I've already studied. I can just, I'm actually drawing from my own you know, the, the goal that I've mined yep. and stored somewhere. So, mm -hmm. all right. So we have writing Wednesday, writing Wednesday, thinking Thursday. Okay. And, uh, that is just the day that is dedicated just to think now one Thursday a month, I'm going to step into what's called a creative meeting where my team is going to present, present me ideas. And I do our all staff one Thursday a month, okay. which is more pastoral mm -hmm. development with them. But other than that, it is a time where I am thinking through, most of the time, organizational challenges. At home? At, where, where, where? I'm at home. Okay, yeah. I'm at home or somewhere else I want to be. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it could be top golf. It could be yeah. uh, whatever. Um, I've learned this thing recently called spiritual temperaments and sacred pathways. And even though I'm not a naturist, environment changes. 100%. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, open me up mentally in a different kind of way. Yeah. So sometimes I have to like get away from my home. Yeah, I've heard it said change of pace plus change of place equals a change of perspective. Yeah. So just, right. yeah, just yep. mix it up a little bit. So yep. that's it is, hey, is, is there any any work I just need to catch up on? Any any problem we're dealing with organizationally? Or if it's not problematic, where do I want to get ahead? Right. Initiatives, now, do you, now, do you go in with an agenda in, uh, in mind? Like I know what I'm going to think about or do you, you just let it just come to you? Um, it, It's kind of a little bit of both. Okay. So there, generally speaking, there are things I have like this... Um, App. And on this app, I have what's called a master list because my philosophy is I want to use technology for storage. I want to use my brain for creativity. So I don't want to so what be. Was say that again. Say that again. I want to use technology for storage, my brain for creativity. Great. Okay. So I don't want to have to try to remember what problem I need to solve, what initiative I need to flesh out, what you know resource I want to create. When I get that, I got something called a master list. I just dump it. In there, that's good. So when I when I'm when I'm going into thinking Thursday, I'm pulling some things off of that list if that makes sense. And um, I don't always know going into Thursday what I'm going to work on, but I know it's going to be something on that list that I'm going to give attention it's to. Probably an area that most pastors don't do, and they probably should do. Right? Is actually they're so busy doing the next thing that they know is coming that they don't take time just to pause and. And think, wouldn't you agree? I mean, well, I know it's important. It's important for me because I feel like um, I was always, there was a season where I was always reacting. Yep. And I felt like a firefighter and not a visionary. So I'm always putting out fires. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't dreaming and building and, and getting ahead. And so um for I know for me it's it's been it's been a game changer. That's awesome. Okay, we have thinking Thursday. Yep. And then I have filming Friday. And so Friday is when I'm gonna do all of my filming. So if it's Bible studies, if it's curriculums for the church, if it's um programs for Content for my coaching programs. Okay. Everything's going to be done there. So I do. I go from 12 to 1. I take a break from 1 to 2. Then I go from 2 to 3.30. Okay. And then I go home. If it's football season, I'm taking a nap. And then I got to go to my son's game That's right. Friday night. Uh, if it's not football season, then I'm just kind of with a, with a wife or with friends on Friday And when you night. do filming, are you using teleprompter? Do you, do you take the time to script or you, are you, can, you, can you just do it just off the cuff? No, it is not off the cuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't the, do that either. Yeah, I mean, it is I, not off the cuff I mean, I spend a lot of time putting things in the script <clears throat> and writing it in a way where, where it's not how you read, it's how you speak. So yep. it feels natural. But 100%. Man, it'll save you so much time in the studio if you do it that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I feel better about the quality of what I'm producing when I'm prepared and organized, yeah. et cetera. So... That's Friday, and then I, I've got semi-slow Saturday. And it means if I've got, you know, an event or something like that at the church, then I participate in that. But other than that, Saturday's just kind of semi-slow. I'm yeah. watching football games, or uh, if, I, if, if there's something I need to do before Sunday, I'll do that. But other than that— Yeah, I call it quieting my soul. I you like know, that. Right before, because you really, the energy and the emotion and the spiritual focus and all of that that it takes to— you know, to serve people well and serve God well on a Sunday, man, if you don't come in replenished 
in some way. And, and I think the only way to really do it is just not to have a crazy full Saturday. In fact, I even have to think about, you know, the types of foods that I eat on a Saturday. It's probably yeah. the only day you think of, you think about it every day, obviously, and, and I obviously don't. But I, I'm probably uh, I'm more like Darius Daniels on Saturday when it comes to my eating, because even like dairy stuff and all that is not good for you know your your, yeah. your voice. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really it's the only day I'm kind of conscious about it. But uh, but it is. I, I think. But I never thought about it in the concept of semi slow. Just man, I'm just got. I've got to. I've got to make sure I'm paced well so I can. Leave 100%. it all out on the field 100%. Uh, on Sunday. So talk to us. What does Sundays look like? Sundays are pretty, a marathon right now for us, our Atlanta location. So it is, I've got a service at 8, 30, 10 o'clock, 11, 45, 1, 30. So that wow. is, that's every Sunday right now. That's right. Yeah, that's a day. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. I think one of the things that helps is Saturday. Yeah. Because... Mm-hmm. I am like physically, yeah. I'm recharged, but also mentally PC. I'm not dealing with a lot of stuff that's going to take me out of a positive vibe. Right. I want to come in Sunday full of faith, excited about what God is doing, et cetera. So I feel like I'm emotionally charged up as, you know, as well. Um, so guys, please go listen to some of the messages. You can find them. Um, of course, you can find them on all the places <laughs> where, where messages are. Uh, I want to spend the last few minutes talking about a part of your church. I always say that every church, every church has something that they do better than 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 you. Mm-hmm. So I even when, no matter what size the church is, I'll go try to find the one best practice of that church that I think separates them from everybody else and is and and I think when you go into other churches with that attitude to, by the way too that man they they can teach me something and go into every leader and saying look you know, they may not be able to teach me everything, but they can teach me this because there right. is a best practice. And mm-hmm. I always say, Darius, they're better than we are at that for now. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> because I'm going to learn it and come and try to perfect it, yeah. and then they'll come learn it, relearn it. it from me. Um, I love it. But I think one of the best things you guys do is your discipleship to men. I mean, I mm-hmm. know enough about this. We were talking about it at lunch today that you, yeah. in fact, I asked you straight up, I said, what is the best thing you guys do? And you said, man, PC, we... We can disciple some men. Just give give us a little nugget. We don't have a whole lot of time, but give us a little taste of what that looks like. Because I think this is something that I think the church needs to be involved in more, and that is just organic discipleship. Talk about it a little bit. Yeah, and so what I'm talking to talking about specifically as it relates to what we do with men is, and I won't get into why, but there was this event one time that I was a part of, and it was a number of different like tribes and sects there, and I and I it came to me. I said, man, I think we're under challenging men. Yep. We're under challenging men because if they'll do some of this stuff, they'll th- mm. they will commit. And so, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to make men who were not ready for a next level kind of commitment feel um, that they had to rush their process and their spiritual journey. Yet there were men who needed to be challenged more and were ready. So I, my thought process was: How, besides what we're doing in small groups and things of that particular nature, how can I reach inside the community of faith and pull out men who are ready to be challenged and go deeper? So the name of our men's ministry is called Made Men based on Genesis 1.26. We believe males are born, men are made. So Pat PC, I created this 12-week intensive train discipleship training for men. We call it basic training. But what we tell the men, hey, every man here is a part of our men's ministry. Every man here is not a made man. And w- what we mean by that is... We wanted to walk, we wanted to say, hey, we want to be made in the image and likeness of God. So we created this 12-week process, discipleship journey. And I got inspired a little bit from it by my son's experience at West Point. And I said, hey, this isn't Army basic training. This is for Navy SEALs. So it's so I created this curriculum. It is 12 weeks, 12 weeks in a row. You only get to miss one. We only open it up once a year. If you miss more than one, you can't finish the cohort. You got to do it again next wow, year. I love that. Every man that's on, on it's uh, virtual, it's on Zoom. Your camera has to be on. If your camera is not on, they're going to warn you one time. Then they're going to kick you out of the Zoom room. You must come on on time. If you come in a minute late, you're not going to be allowed go. in the <laughs> Zoom room. And when we break out in small groups to discuss the content, Every man has to contribute because as a man, you got to show up there you go. and you got to know how to speak right. up. And then at the uh, at different points in the program, we have accountability exams where they have to take 
exams to make sure they've comprehended the content. It's open book, but you've got to take the exam so that we make sure that you're comprehending the content. And uh, and then there's a community service hour component there you go. where you've got to complete, I think, about 30 hours of community service. On, so this last cohort we had, I don't know, maybe, uh, and we want the completion rate to be small. We maybe had, I think, maybe like a thousand men sign up this last time and 300 and something finish. I think the year before yeah. that we had like 2,000 sign up and maybe 600 or so finish. I can't remember what the numbers were right. before. So we just finished our cohort. But what I want to say to like the, the moms and the, the, um, the wives in our church is give them to me for 12 weeks. And we, we can't change everything in his life in 12 weeks. But if he leans in, we will give you back a different man. That's good, man. And of all the things, I know we only have like a minute or so, but of all the things that's in those 12 weeks, what is the one thing that you that is resonating the most or that needs to be changed the most or that, that you feel the most proud of, of all the things you're working on? A man on? and his family. Okay. That's one of the programs. A man and his family because we deal with what it actually looks like to lead your home. Let's go. Particularly in the area spiritually, which is where I found a lot of men struggle because sometimes they don't even feel like they're in the same place spiritually as the wife is. Right. Yeah. And so dis- dismantling the view that you have to know more scripture than her to lead spiritually. So I feel like that is where we get the most feedback from men mm-hmm. and we get the most feedback from wives about the men. Like one lady was just telling me not too long ago, she was like, I was getting ready to leave the house and my husband said, wait, let me pray for you. I was like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I love that. We need thing. to get you back on just to unpack that whole thing, yes, man. Sir, uh, we love it. Bro, I love you. I appreciate you so very much. And uh, we have to stop for today because uh, you're due in, in a class here today <laughs> for some of our students. And thank you for serving our students here today, too. Been my we're, pleasure. We're proud to have you as a professor yep. in residence at Highlands College. I'm honored to be here. Yes, love sir. You. And we'll make sure we link to all things Dr. Darius Daniels in the show notes. Check those out at growleader.com slash podcast. We're so grateful you're here today. Hey, don't forget, Grow Leader Conference is coming up in the summer. We just sent out uh, registration links. Check and see if there's room. We'd love to have you here. And if not, be looking for a regional in a city near you. Grateful you're with us today. We'll see you next time on the Grow Leader Podcast. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And also a big thank you to all of our partners that help make the Grow Leader Podcast happen. For over 80 years, Wesleyan Investment Foundation has helped churches with their borrowing and investing needs. And whether you're dreaming of new opportunities or seeking wise resource management, we think WIF can help you. You can learn more about them at wifonline.com slash grow leader. For over 30 years, One Hope has partnered with churches and ministries to impact the lives of children and youth with the message of the gospel of Christ. Through collaboration with local communities worldwide, One Hope has reached over 2 billion young people in 112 countries. Discover how you could partner with them at onehope.net. If you're looking for ways to know your people better and also grow your church at the same time, you need to know about Studio C. Studio C combines strategy, technology, and communications to maximize church member engagement. You can bridge the engagement gap and transform your church's impact with Studio C. And you can learn more about them at thestudioc.org slash growleader.